Hi friends, welcome back to another tarot inspired yoga class. Today we have a doozy of a card, let me tell you. I'm not gonna lie, I've kind of been avoiding this one because it's one of those cards that has sort of a stigma. People are a little bit scared of it, but we're gonna dive into it today. Today's card is the tower. Now, if you're not familiar with tarot cards at all, maybe that doesn't mean anything to you. If you are familiar with tarot cards, maybe you gasped a little bit. Maybe you were like, oh my gosh, why would she pick that card? So the tower is one of those cards, kind of like when you see the death card, you kind of go, oh, oh no, am I gonna die? Or you see the devil card, and it's a little scary. The tower card kind of has a similar vibe. It's one of those cards that the, just the image itself is a little intimidating. So the tower is literally a picture of a tall tower, lightning bolts, thunder, people jumping off of the building, it's cracking in half. The tower card is upheaval. It's destruction. It's completely tearing everything down into nothing. Destruction, that's what people think of when they think of the tower. Now, my perspective is a little different because I tend to gravitate towards those cards that people find a little bit scary. I love the death card and I love the tower. I think you just have to think beyond the initial shock and awe of the word destruction. Because really what the tower card means to me is that you're tearing down things in your life, things about yourself that don't serve you anymore. Maybe it's things that have always been in your life, they feel comfortable, you're used to them, it's part of your routine, but it doesn't really feel that good. Maybe there are things in your life that you just feel like you should be doing to progress in life, but they don't really bring you joy and they actually make you feel maybe a little trapped by everything that you've built. Maybe you have built your life into something you realized you didn't actually want. Maybe it was societal pressure, maybe it's because my parents told me to, you know? We all get stuck in those cycles where maybe your life has begun something that doesn't feel right for you. And so the tower card is that moment to tear everything down and start again from scratch. It's a really scary idea, right? Even if you have a life that's not bringing you joy, it's still a life that maybe feels comfortable and safe because it's always been there. But the only way that you can build something new is by starting from scratch, tearing that old stuff down, tossing it away, and building what you're really meant to be. Maybe you've heard of the phrase hitting rock bottom, you know? Usually we use that term for addiction, but I think it can also mean hitting rock bottom and knowing you need to make a change, whatever that change might be. So it's, it's an area of the unknown, it's kind of scary. No one wants to start from zero. It happens sometimes, but it also is a time where you can really see how truly resilient human beings are. Because even if we're torn down to zero, we can build ourselves back up and sometimes build ourselves back up to something even better than we could have ever imagined. So maybe let that idea sink in. What are some ways that you could tear down aspects of your life that you don't like, that don't serve you, that don't bring you joy, and build something completely new? Take a chance and make a change. So today's class, we're changing it up. We're going right back to our beloved vinyasa style class. So we're going to be moving and grooving, maybe doing a new pose or two in there, something a little spicy. It might feel a little scary and unknown, but we're going to try it out and we're going to trust ourselves to be resilient 
and we're ready to make a change. So let's do it on our mats. Grab any props you might need. I would always, always suggest two blocks at the top of your mat. If you want a blanket, a bolster, anything else that you like to use in your practice, please go ahead and do so. Or no props at all. Totally up to you. We are going to start our practice on our backs today. So everybody, when you've got all your props ready, ready to move, go ahead and lay down on your mat. We're gonna move towards a figure four. So cross the right ankle over the left knee and just kind of gently press that right knee out a little bit. See how it feels. See if our hips are ready to stretch it out. We're gonna be stretching our hips a lot today. And if this feels all right, you're ready to go a little further. Maybe lift the left foot up off the ground, draw the left knee towards the body and the right ankle. Feel a bit more of a stretch on the outer hip here. You can grab your hands, clasp them behind the left knee or in front of the left knee for a little bit more. Totally up to you. And just start to rock left to right. See how that changes the hip stretch here in our figure four. <sighs> Gently starting to open up the hips. We're going to be working a lot on our hips and our hamstrings today to make space for our peak pose, which will be a fun surprise. Go ahead and set that left foot down uncross and we'll move to the other side. So crossing the left ankle over the right knee, pressing that left knee out, see how it feels. And if you want to stay here, that's perfectly fine. Maybe this is enough of a stretch for you today. Or to intensify, lift up the right foot, draw the right knee in towards the body and the left ankle, grabbing the hands behind the right knee or in front of the knee for a little bit more. And we're just rocking side to side. Feeling how that changes the stretch. See if it gives you a little bit more something, something. And just close your eyes and feel it. Slowly lower the right foot down, uncross the ankle, send both feet up towards the sky, grab behind the knees, rock along the spine once or twice, and then meet me in a seat facing the front of the mat. Legs stretch out long, let's start on those hamstrings. We'll do a nice gentle seated forward fold to start. Inhale, sweep the arms up overhead, nice long spine. Exhale, hinging from the hips, fold forward over the legs and let the back round. You can grab the outsides of the feet or just let the hands grab onto the shins if that feels more comfortable for you. Drawing the head forward and then rounding the back, bow the head over the legs. Take a few steady breaths here. Keep the feet super active here. If we let our feet just flop out to the sides, we're not gonna get much of a hamstring stretch. So we want the legs to be super engaged in this position. The feet and the legs. A couple more breaths here in our forward fold. And then on the inhale, slowly roll all the way up to a seat. Cross the ankles, roll over, and everybody meet in tabletop position. Wrists under shoulders, knees under hips. Maybe just wiggle side to side a few times. Do a few cat and cows on your own breath. Arching the back with the inhale and rounding the back on the exhale, tucking everything in. 
get a little movement through the spine. Take your time here. Acclimate to the practice. Meeting back in a neutral tabletop position. Go ahead and grab your blocks if you've got them here. And we're gonna step the right foot forward to a low lunge. So hands on the blocks, maybe torso upright. Sink deep into the front of that left hip. Mm, nice long neck, gazing forward. Inhale here. On the exhale, slowly send the hips back, straighten through the right leg, point the toes up towards the ceiling for our half splits position. Inhale, lengthen the spine. Exhale, round. Moving through cat-cow-like movements in our half splits, just to see how it feels. See if it makes a difference in your hamstring stretch. And this time, I want you to press into the blocks or the mat. We're going to puff up the back body. And then as we press into the block with our hands, use that right hip flexor to see if you can just slightly lift the right foot up off the mat and then lower it back down. Woo! That's pretty intense on those hip flexors, but we're gonna wake them up. So inhale, gaze forward. Exhale, round the spine, press the hands into the blocks and lift, maybe pulse that right foot up. Pulse, 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 and lower it back down. Okay, one more time. Inhale, lengthen forward. Exhale, round the back, press into the blocks, lift the right foot, pulse, pulse, pulse and lower it back down. Great job, everybody. Move back forward into your lunge. One breath here, just to feel that juicy hip stretch. And then step the right foot back to meet the left. And we'll switch right to the other side. So left foot forward, hands on the blocks. Nice, deep, low lunge. Sink into that right hip flexor. Take an inhale here, and on the end, exhale, send the hips back, straighten the left leg, point the left toes up towards the ceiling. Now, separate hips, separate lives, so this might be harder on this left side, it might be easier on this left side. We're going to give it a try, and just notice if one hip flexor is maybe a little stronger than the other. Usually that is the case. <laughs> so take a moment in your half splits, lengthen the spine forward with the inhale, and on the exhale, round the spine, press the back of the heart up towards the ceiling. Little cat-cow movements in our half splits. Moving with your own breath. Doesn't have to be huge movements. Just tipping the pelvis forward and back. Now this time, inhale, lengthen forward. We're gonna do our little terrible lift. Press the hands into the blocks, puff up the back body, and see if you can lighten up that left foot and lift it up off the mat, and then lower it back down. Oh boy, my quad did not like that. A lot harder on my left side. <laughs> so let's try that again. Pressing the hands into the block. Inhale, lengthen forward. Exhale, puff up the back body. Lift the left foot. Pulse, pulse, pulse. And lower it back down. Woo! I'm definitely feeling it more on the left side than the right. <laughs> so I'm with you if you're feeling it. One more time. Let's do it. Inhale, lengthen forward. Exhale, puff up the back body, press the hands into the block, lift the left foot, pulse, 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 and lower it back down. Oh, it's over. Sending our hips forward one more time in our low lunge. 
sink into the hips. Beautiful. Move your blocks out of the way and step the left foot back. From here, tuck the toes, send the hips up and back for our first downward facing dog. Any little movements, get yourself comfortable in your down dog. Pedal at the feet. Send the hips left to right. Maybe shake the head yes, or shake the head no. Get a little neck stretch in. All right, once we're settled, inhale, right foot up and back behind you. Exhale, knee to nose, step forward to the outside of the right hand for lizard lunge. Now you are always invited to lower the left knee for a little less intensity. Since we're trying to open up our hips a little more, I'm going to lift that left knee, keep it lifted, and keep that right knee tucked in towards my armpit. So in our lizard lunge, maybe you want to try a little bounce in the hips, moving up and down, left and right. Just get a little movement in. Get a little buoyancy. Sometimes that can help to open it up. Maybe bend the elbows, get a little more bounce. Maybe even start lifting up off the hands if you want to get fancy. And then lower the left knee. Send the right foot back. Send the hips back, quick child's pose. And then back to downward dog, and we'll move to the other side. Take a breath, inhale, and exhale, beautiful. Inhale, left foot up and back. Exhale, knee to nose. Step to the outside of the right hand. Again, you can lower down that right knee for a little less intensity, or keep it lifted. And we'll just start to bounce the hips. Getting into that left hip, the front of the right hip flexor. Maybe bend the elbows a little bit, get a little more buoyant. Maybe the hands will start to lift. Have fun with it. And then lower the right knee. Left knee back to meet the right. Sink the hips back. Quick child's pose. Gain back our composure. I know that was kind of silly, but I had to do it. Tuck the toes, send the hips up and back. Downward facing dog. Gaze forward at the hands, bend the knees. Step or hop forward, forward fold. Feel free to keep a nice bend in both knees here. Get in a rag doll, reach to opposite elbows, sway side to side. Lower the hands. Inhale, lift up halfway, lengthen forward. Exhale, fold. Inhale, sweep the arms up, press the palms together. And exhale, arms by the sides. All right. I am feeling sufficiently warmed up, I think. So let's keep going into our main flow. Standing at the front of the mat in Tadasana. Inhale, lengthen the spine up towards the ceiling. Reach the crown of the head. And exhale, send that energy down the body, into the feet, into the ground. Feel super grounded here in your mountain pose. Inhale, sweep the arms up overhead, press the palms together. Exhale, fold forward over the legs. Inhale, lift up halfway. Exhale, plant the hands, step back to downward facing dog. Beautiful. From here, right foot up and back, toes point down. Exhale, knee to nose. 
and we're going to lower onto the shin for a quick pigeon pose. So our shin is at about a 45 degree angle here. You can keep the toes tucked or untucked. Inhale, sit up nice and tall. And on the exhale, fold forward. See if you can fold so much that you touch the tip of your nose down to your mat. Inhale, lift back up. Press into the hands, tuck the left toes. Send the right foot up and back once again. Exhale into flip dog. So open up the hip here. Turn towards the right. Slowly lower the right foot down behind you. Lift the right arm. Lower the hips down. Take a breath. Inhale, press it back up. Nice side bend here. Right arm up and over the right ear. Inhale, exhale, turn forward, plant the right hand, and again, send the right foot up and back. Exhale, knee to nose, lower the shin down, pigeon pose. Inhale, lift, exhale, lower. Try to touch the nose to the mat if it'll get there. Inhale, lift, plant the hands, tuck the left toes, send the right foot up and back. From here, fall and star. Exhale, knee to nose. Kick it out towards the left. Swivel on the left foot, plant the foot. Right hand in towards the body. Open the left arm, express yourself. And then slowly lower down onto the seat. We're in a wide-legged forward fold. Inhale, open the chest. Exhale, left hand towards right left foot. Reach the right arm up and overhead into a nice side stretch. Try to open the chest here as much as you can. We don't want to collapse down. We want to keep that side stretch intact. If you can reach the left toes with the right hand, you can grab them. But don't sacrifice the openness of the chest just to grab onto the foot. Inhale, lift back up out of the pose. Fold over towards the right, just a counter stretch. And then however you'd like to get there, moving back to downward facing dog. Beautiful. Moving through a vinyasa of your choice. Inhale, plank pose. Knees lowered or lifted. Bend the elbows, lower through chaturanga. Inhale, lift up, back bend. Exhale, hips up and back, downward facing dog. Beautiful, lovely job, everyone. Let's go right to the other side. Inhale, lift it up and back, toes point down. Exhale, knee to nose. And slowly lower the shin down to a 45 degree angle for pigeon pose. Right toes can be tucked or untucked, totally your choice. Inhale, lift the spine, open the chest. Exhale, fold over the left leg. If you can swing it, touch the tip of the nose to the mat. Inhale, lift back up. Plant the hands, tuck the right toes. Send the right foot up and back. Beautiful. Moving to flip dog, so open the hip, bend the knee. Turn towards the left. Lower the left toes down behind you. Lift the left arm. Lower the hips down. Take a breather here. Inhale, press it back up for a flip dog. Nice side bend. Turn towards the front, plant the left hand. Left foot up and back. Exhale, knee to nose. Lower the shin down. Pigeon pose. Inhale, lift it up, open the chest. Exhale, fold down over the leg. Maybe touch the tip of the nose to the mat. Inhale, lift back up. Plant the hands. Send the left foot up and back. Moving towards fallen star. Exhale, knee to nose. Cross it over to the right. Move the left hand in towards the middle. Lift the right hand, express yourself. 
Lower the hips slowly to the mat. Meeting in wide-legged seat. Inhale, lift the chest. Open the shoulders. Right hand towards right foot. Left hand up and over. Get a nice side stretch on the left side. Inhale, reach. Exhale, keep opening the chest up as much as you can. Very important in today's class to keep the chest super open. If you can reach the left to right toes with the left hand, go ahead and do so. But again, don't sacrifice the openness of the shoulders. Inhale, lift back up. Counter stretch, fold to the left side. Meeting back in downward facing dog, however you get there. And moving through a vinyasa of your choice or staying in downward dog to take a breather. Inhale, plank pose. Exhale, lower chaturanga. Inhale, lift up, back bend. Exhale, hips up and back, downward facing dog. Gaze forward at the hands, bend the knees, step or hop forward, forward fold. Inhale, lift up, halfway. Lengthen the spine. Exhale, fold over the legs. Inhale, sweep the arms up, press the palms together. And exhale, arms by the sides, Tadasana. Great job, everybody. We'll move on to our next flow. Again, focusing on hips and hamstrings. All right, meeting back in Tadasana, mountain pose. Come back to your breath. Feel your heart beating in your body. Inhale, sweep the arms up, press the palms together. Exhale, fold forward over the legs. Inhale, lift up, halfway. Exhale, fold forward, plant the hands, step back, downward facing dog. Inhale, right foot up and back. Exhale, knee to nose, step forward, moving towards warrior one. So plant the sole of the left foot down, maybe move the feet out onto train tracks, make some room for your hips. Inhale, sweep the arms up. Warrior one, gazing forward. Inhale, reach up towards the sky. Exhale, bend the elbows, open up the wings, open up the shoulders. Reach the arms out to the sides and twist towards the right. Inhale here. Exhale, bend deeply into that right knee. Tip back for twisted reverse warrior. And then unwind into warrior two. Right arm forward, right foot forward, reaching away from the midline. Beautiful. Inhale, straighten the right leg. Tip back, reverse triangle. Moving towards triangle pose, so if you like to use a block here, go ahead and set that up on the outside of the right foot. From reverse triangle, lean forward, send that left hip back, and lower the right hand down to the shin or a block, left arm up to the ceiling. You can let that left hip kind of come forward a little bit. Doesn't have to be perfectly pointed up towards the ceiling. And just think about opening the chest up towards the left. You can gaze forward, up at the left hand, or to give your neck a break, maybe look down at the right foot. Keep a slight micro bend in that right knee. Try not to lock it out. Contrary to what you might think, get, keeping a little bend in that front knee can help kind of stretch out that muscle a little bit more. Makes you rely less on flexibility and more on your muscles. Inhale, look down at the right foot. Slowly lift back up. Bend the right knee, warrior two. Inhale, lift up out of the pose. Turn the toes towards the long side of the mat. Reach up 
Inhale. Exhale, fold forward over the legs, wide-legged standing forward, fold. If you can't quite reach the mat, always feel free to grab a block or two, place your hands there, or just fingertips on the ground. Folding from the hips, maybe sway side to side here. I like to encourage some movement. Just helps a little bit to give yourself some buoyancy, like we were doing in our weird little lizard lunge bounces. You can bend through both knees here, get even deeper into the hips, sway side to side. This is one of my favorites. It's kind of like a goddess pose with the torso folded. Straighten both legs, toes pointing towards the long side of the mat. Inhale, lift up halfway, hands on the hips, and lift the torso all the way up. Beautiful. We're gonna do some side lunges. So inhale, both arms up. Turn, keep the left toes facing towards the long side of the mat. And right toes out towards the front side of the mat. Inhale, gather some length. Exhale, hands towards heart center. Bend into that left knee. You can grab onto the mat if that feels more stable. Right toes facing up towards the sky. Left leg is straight. As you can see, my left heel does not reach the ground here. That's perfectly okay. It all depends on your ankle flexibility. So if you don't quite have that flexibility, don't worry. Just Place fingertips on the ground. Make sure you don't fall over. From here, we're gonna do a little twist. So left arm on the inside of the left leg, plant the left hand. Inhale, turn towards the right. Reach up and over with the right hand. Remember, keep the chest nice and open here. We're looking for a twist. Inhale. Exhale, lower the right hand down. Press into the hands, lift back up to our wide-legged forward fold, bend through the knees, and sweep the arms up. Let's go to the other side. Inhale, lift, open the chest, left toes towards the left. Exhale, hand towards heart center, bend through the right knee, maybe lower the fingertips, draw the left toes up towards the sky, left leg is nice and long. You can keep the hands on the mat or hands at heart center. I need to keep my hands down for balance, so don't feel bad if you do as well. From here, moving into our twist. Plant the right hand down on the inside of the right leg. Inhale, twist towards the left. Left arm up and over. Getting a nice opening in the chest towards the left. Inhale, exhale, left hand down, press into the hands, lift up, standing forward fold, maybe bend through each knee or both knees back to our goddess fold, not sure what to call this, getting super deep into those hips, inhale, straighten the legs, turn the toes towards the long side of the mat, Fold, inhale, sweep the arms up, lift the torso, back towards warrior two, bend the right knee, moving towards warrior one, both arms up, plant the left foot down, warrior one, lower the hands down to a lunge, moving towards standing split. So lean all the way into the right foot, and lift the left leg up. Now, two options here. You can stay in our traditional half or standing splits where both hips are facing down. Our toes, right, left toes are facing down and we're just working on opening up this way. Or if you wanna get a little fancy with it, you can open the hips towards the left, maybe bend that left knee and walk the hands over to the right, getting a little 
side stretch in. I feel a little bit more hamstring stretch as well. Totally dependent on your body. Keep working on opening up the hips. Slowly walk the hands back towards center. Step the left foot back. Step the right foot back to downward facing dog. And let's move through a vinyasa of your choice. Inhale, plank. Exhale, lower through chaturanga. Inhale, lift to a back bend. And exhale, downward facing dog. Beautiful. Let's do all of that on the other side. Take a breath here. Inhale. And exhale. Lovely. Inhale, left foot up and back. Exhale, knee to nose. Step forward. Moving towards warrior one. Walk the feet out on the train tracks. Plant the sole of the right foot down. Inhale, sweep the arms up. Bend into that front knee for warrior one. Hmm. Settle into the pose. Inhale, reach the arms up. Lengthen the spine. Exhale, bend the elbows, open the wings. And open the arms and twist towards the left. Get a little nice twist through the soft organs of the belly. Inhale, lean back. Twisted reverse warrior. And unwind. Open up into warrior two, facing towards the right. Left foot forward. Bend into that front knee. Inhale. Exhale, sink into it. Inhale, straighten through the left leg. Tip back, reverse triangle pose. If you like a block for triangle pose, go ahead and set it up on the outside of the left foot. From reverse triangle, kink that right hip back. Reach forward with the left hand and lower it down to the block. Right arm up. And open the shoulders up towards the right. Again, the gaze can be ever wherever it feels comfortable for your neck. So you can gaze forward, up at the right hand, or even down at the left foot, just to give your neck a break. Totally up to you. Keep a tiny micro bend in that front knee. Rely on your muscles instead of your flexibility here. Let that right hip just gently tilt forward naturally. Inhale, gaze down at the left foot. Lift up out of the pose. Turn the toes towards the long side of the mat. Reach up overhead. Gather some length. Exhale, hinges at the hips. Fold forward over the legs. You can always grab a block if you can't quite reach the mat here. Use that to bring the mat to you. Or just fingertips on the mat. And fold forward, bow the head. Maybe bend through one knee and another knee. Sway side to side. We can do our little goddess crouch, goddess fold. You guys will have to help me name this one. <laughs> and just Moving the weight side to side, getting into those inner hips. Can feel really nice. Straighten the legs, toes point forward. Fold all the way down. Inhale, lift up halfway. Bend the knees. Sweep the arms up overhead. Moving towards our side lunges. Inhale, gather some length. Left toes towards the front of the mat. Exhale, hands toward the heart. Bend into the right knee. Lower the fingertips if you'd like. Left toes point up. Keep going. Plant the right hand down on the inside of the right knee. Open up into a twist. Open that chest. Exhale, lower back down. 
press into the hands, lift back up, forward fold, bend through the knees, sweep the arms up, over to the other side. Right toes towards the back of the mat, exhale, hands at heart center, bend through the left knee, toes point up on the right foot, lower the fingertips, we're in our squat. Plant the left hand on the inside of the left thigh. Reach the arm up and over for our twist to the right. And lower back down. Lift up out of the pose. Forward fold. Maybe bend the knees. Get in our little goddess fold. I'm definitely starting to feel some open hips here. I don't know about you guys. Straighten the legs, toes point forward. Exhale, fold. Get a little deeper. Inhale, lift up halfway. Slight bend in the knees. Sweep the arms up. Moving back to warrior two. Back to warrior one. Facing forward, left knee bent, lower the hands down, moving towards standing splits on the left side, so lean into that left foot, lift the right foot up, lengthen the spine, and then fold towards the left leg. Again, two options. You can stay with our traditional standing splits, or maybe if you'd like, open up the hips, bend through the right knee, and walk the fingertips over towards the left side. Adds in a little bit of hips, a little bit of a twist, and a little extra hamstrings. At least that's how it feels in my body. Everybody's different. Each leg is different. Keep opening those hips. And slowly crawl the fingertips back to neutral. Lower the foot down into a lunge. Step the left foot back, downward facing dog. Moving through a vinyasa of your choice. Moving forward, plank pose. Exhale, chaturanga. Inhale, lift up, back bend. Exhale, hips up and back, downward facing dog. Take a moment. A few deep breaths. And gaze forward at the hands, bend the knees, step or hop forward, forward fold. Inhale, sweep the arms up, press the palms together, and exhale, arms by the sides. Beautiful. We did it. We made it through our main flow. So now moving on to our peak pose, and we are super, super warmed up for it. So I think you guys will like this one. It is deceptively difficult, <laughs> but it's one of those poses you see a lot on Instagram, you know, those aesthetic poses that look really cool, but I really think this is a difficult pose to master. It takes a lot of, like I've been saying the whole class, a lot of hip flexibility, twisting abilities, and definitely hamstring stretching. So we've done all of that, so we're gonna give it a try. And our pose today is called Super Soldier. This is one that you were seeing everywhere a few years ago and I had never heard of it. So it was kind of fun to give it a try. Um, yeah, and it is technically an inversion because top half of you is upside down. So feel free to get a drink, take a seat on the mat, and I'll just demonstrate for you so you can see what it looks like. It's kind of an awkward one to get into because <laughs> you look at these photos and go, well, how the heck did she do that? So I will show you. So I'm actually going to turn my back towards you because I'm going to end up facing you. So we're going to fold forward over the legs. Our feet are about hips width distance at least. You definitely don't want your feet super close together for this one, at least in my experience. So we're getting a nice deep fold here. 
if you've got a belly, maybe make room for it. Definitely helps me. Take a few breaths in your deep fold. And then what we're gonna do is snake, we're gonna bend into both knees here, snake that right arm underneath the right knee. So already getting a little bit awkward, but that's okay. You don't wanna lift up onto the ball of your right foot. You wanna keep that right foot planted because the right foot, this is a one-legged pose and our right foot is gonna stay planted the entire time. So the right hand is snaked behind. The left arm reaches out towards the left just onto fingertips here. So both our hands are on the fingertips. We're gonna lean all our weight into the right side. And then we're gonna lift the left foot and bend the knee. Don't need to open the hips yet. We're gonna grab the right left foot with the right hand. And then let's see if I can do this while talking. Slowly start to straighten the leg. Point the left knee up towards the sky and see how I can see you now. And this is what we call super soldier. Keep straightening that standing leg as much as you can and lower the same way you came and lift up out of it. Oh baby, my right leg was burning that entire time. So as you can see, it's definitely an inversion because the top half of you is upside down looking through your legs. Your hips have to be super open because I know my hips are not as open as most people that do this pose. Your lifted knee is working towards facing up towards the ceiling. I'm sure mine was not, but the more you open up the hips, the more you warm them up. And some of us just don't have that kind of flexibility. That's still okay. That's still super soldier pose. Um, so it's okay if your knee is not perfectly <laughs> up towards the ceiling. But as you can see, I was trying to keep my chest open. We're trying to kind of twist out to get the torso and the shoulders out from behind the leg. So let me show you again on the other side. I haven't done the other side in a while. So this is another one where maybe one side it will be easier than the other, and that's okay. So we're gonna try it on the other side. Again, feet or hips with distance may be wider, might feel better. Folding forward over the legs, readjust as needed. Take a moment to get the deepest fold you can. That will definitely help you. Now, we're gonna bend into both knees here and snake the left arm behind the left knee. Left foot stays planted the entire time, so don't lift up onto the ball of the foot. Stay planted. Right arm reaches out towards the side, up on fingertips. We're gonna lean all our weight into the left side, bend the right knee, lift it up. Grab onto the foot, send the right knee up towards the sky, and try to open up as much as you can with the shoulders. It's a little bit more difficult on this side for me. And keeping straight through that left leg. Lower the way you came and lift back up. So that side was definitely more difficult for me. My left hamstring maybe not quite as open because I couldn't quite straighten my leg all the way. But again, who says you have to be perfectly doing the pose for it to still be the pose? My, one of my teachers, Kara Edwards, always says a little bit of the pose is still the pose. And I 100% believe that. So if this is a pose that you're maybe striving for, just practice a few times. Definitely don't go into this one cold because it probably won't work. <laughs> Might hurt your hamstrings and your hips a little bit. So definitely stretch it out. Maybe go through a full vinyasa practice and then give it a try. So if you haven't yet, I would love for you to try this with me. I'm gonna do this on my right side again because that's my better side it seems. Um, but yeah, definitely try it on both sides. See how it feels, just compare. So we're facing the opposite way that we wanna end up. So I'm gonna turn away from you. And on our right side, just folding forward over the legs. Take a moment to readjust the feet, make room for the belly and the torso. 
You want to get a nice deep fold here. And when you're ready, bend through both knees. Snake the right arm underneath the right knee as far as it'll go. Tent the fingertips. Reach the left arm all the way out to the left. Straight arm up on fingertips once again. Keep that right foot planted. We're going to lift the left foot, bend the knee, grab the left foot with the right hand, draw the left knee up towards the sky, and slowly straighten through the right leg. We're looking back behind us. Lower back down the way you came. And lift the torso. So there you go. That is Super Soldier. I hope you have fun playing with that one. Feel free to pause the video and keep trying it. Um, but yeah, listen to your hamstrings, listen to your hips. Don't go too far and give yourself breaks. All right. All right. So if you're ready to cool down, go ahead and grab a drink. Any props you might need. Ooh, and we're just going to lower down onto our knees, sit our hips back on our heels and hero's pose, sitting up nice and tall, hands on the thighs, close the eyes, and just breathe. Done a lot of work already today. Our hips and hamstrings need a break, so let's give two. Hmm. Couple more breaths here, just slowing down, preparing our body for cool down because we deserve it. Slowly open the eyes, plant the hands down, meet me in tabletop pose, wrists under shoulders, knees under thighs. Few cat and cows here at your own pace. Just to wash away any frustrations we might have had throughout this practice. We're letting them go. And meet me back in a neutral tabletop position, moving towards thread the needle. So widen out the knees just a little bit. We're going to keep the left hand planted on the mat. Inhale, right arm up overhead. Maybe circle through the wrist. Just a few times each direction. Inhale, reach up. Exhale, thread the right arm underneath the left. Lower on to the side of the head. You can press the fingers into the mat to open up even more towards the left. You can reach the left arm up if that feels better. Or keep it planted. Reaching that right arm out to the left and pressing that left hand into the mat to open up the shoulders. Inhale, exhale, unwind, reach the right arm back up and lower the hand back down, moving towards the other side. So right hand is planted, inhale, left arm up to the ceiling, Circle through the wrist a few times in one direction and the other direction. Inhale, reach up. Exhale, thread the left arm underneath the right. Lower on to the left side of the head. Press the right fingertips into the mat and open the shoulders up towards the right. Getting a nice stretch in the upper back. You can keep the right hand planted. Or if it feels good, reach the right arm up for a little bit more. Totally up to you. Just don't forget to breathe. Inhale. Exhale, slowly start to unwind. Left arm reaches up and lowers back down. All right, let's do a few rapid fire on each side. Inhale, right arm up. Exhale, thread it down. 
Inhale, reach it back up and lower. Left side, inhale, left arm up. Thread the needle, lift it up and lower down. One more each side. Inhale, right arm up, thread the needle, inhale, lift, exhale, lower. Last time. Inhale, left arm up, exhale, thread the needle, inhale, reach, and exhale, lower. Beautiful. Go ahead and lower on down to our forearms for Sphinx Pose. We're going to move towards what I call Lazy Mermaid. I'm sure I've done this in a class before because I love this stretch. It's one of my favorites and I think our side body deserves a break because we've done a lot of twisting. So let me get my microphone out of the way here. <laughs> All right, so from our Sphinx Pose, what we're going to do is kink that right forearm in towards the body. Lift up onto the right hand and just press up so we're on our right hip. The feet can stay outstretched here. Or for a little bit more balance, you can plant the left foot in front of you. Either way, it's perfectly fine. Whatever feels balanced, press in the left hand, lift up onto the right hand. So we're calling this lazy mermaid because usually in yoga, they want you to press out of the shoulder. Stay super open, just like I've been saying this whole class. Well, now we're going to break some yoga rules and do the opposite of that. We're going to sink down into that right shoulder. Don't worry too much about keeping the shoulders open or staying lifted out. We're intentionally sinking down into that right shoulder. And this kind of gives us more of an intense stretch through like the right rib cage, all those little side body muscles that have been super working for us. Giving them a break in our Lazy Mermaid. Feels so, so good to me. I try to pepper this in to as many classes as I can. <laughs> All right, we're gonna come back the way we came. So plant the left hand down, lower down the right forearm, move back forward to Sphinx Pose, and we'll do that same thing on the other side. So kink the left forearm in towards the body, plant the right hand, and just push yourself up onto your left side. From here, you can keep the, both legs outstretched if that feels okay. Or for a little extra balance, step the right foot in front of the left leg. Totally up to you. Press into the right hand and lift up onto the left palm. So now we're up onto both palms here. And again, instead of pressing out like we're taught to do, we're gonna just shrug sink into that left shoulder. Get a nice stretch through the left side body. Feels like almost fanning out those left hips. And this pose just makes you look like a mermaid on a rock at sea, trying to lure sailors in. <laughs> just take a moment to pretend you're a beautiful little mermaid. <sighs> Don't forget to breathe as we sink into the side body. One more breath, inhale, exhale, beautiful. Coming back the way we came, plant the right hand down, lower onto left forearm, and move back to Sphinx Pose. Take a deep breath here, press into those forearms, lift the head, and just lower down, maybe palm on top of palm, and then rest your forehead on the palm for a front lying Shavasana. Just take a moment, soak it all in. From here, go ahead and lift the head, and we're just gonna roll over onto our backs. From here, reach all four limbs up to the sky for dead bug pose. 
circle through the wrists and the ankles. Don't forget to switch directions. Very little muscular engagement here. We are just looking to send those limbs up to the sky, get a little bit different perspective, get the blood flowing in a different direction. All right, and lower back down. Hug the knees in towards the body. <sighs> Sway side to side. And we'll... Our Gentle left arm out towards the left side. And let the knees drop over towards the left. Reach the right arm up towards the right. Left hand on top of the thigh. And settle into your gentle supine twist. Don't forget to breathe. center, hug them in one last time, any final movements before Shavasana that call to you, maybe an extra pose that you feel like, maybe you feel like you're missing, otherwise just send the feet out long, reach the arms up overhead, one full body stretch from the fingertips all the way down to the toe tips, <sighs> and let the arms flop out to the sides. Let the feet flop out to the sides, wiggle around as much as you need to find a comfortable position for your final resting pose, Shavasana. Feel free to grab any props you might like in your final pose, maybe a pillow for the head, maybe a bolster under the knees to give the lower back a break. Or even just a blanket over the body if it's a little cold where you're practicing. Whatever you need is beautiful. Incorporate as many or as little as you'd like. And when you're ready, slowly settle in to your Shavasana. And we'll stay here in quiet meditation for a few moments.
without moving just yet. Slowly start to deepen the breath. Coming back to the physical body. Coming back to your mat. Start to wiggle through the fingers, wiggle through the toes. Move arms and legs slowly and mindfully, waking up the body bit by bit. Maybe bend through the knees, sway them side to side. Reach both arms up overhead, full body stretch. And then keeping the eyes closed, slowly move on to the side body, taking your time. Hands on knees or thighs, sit up nice and tall. Take a moment to thank your body for all the hard work it did today. Because it really did work for you and it deserves your love and praise. We'll end our class like I always do with one big communal breath all together. Maybe the biggest breath you've taken yet today. So when you're ready, slowly exhale the air out of the system. Inhale all the way to the top, sip in as much air as you can get. And exhale, sigh it out. Press the hands together at heart center and bow forward to seal your practice.